Hey. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, this is Silburn here, and uh, want to wish you a wonderful evening. I'm from the UK here, the land of uh, Brexit. Yes, and uh, my topic is simply going to be deal or no deal, deal or no deal. But uh, while I just give some, what should I say, commercials? I've been having some problems of late with my Facebook Live and my social media thing where I realized that uh, a lot of people weren't actually seeing anything seen any of my posts for a while and then I did some investigation and I called out Mr. Mark Zuckerberg called him out called him out big time and he had to comply really and sort it out <laughs> you know so I want to thank you so much for coming on um, you know so let me just give a, a few minutes as well and of course one can always catch this on the replay you know simple as that but what i'm doing i'm doing some to share but before i go any further i want to um actually put my condolences to the 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 the, the massive um killing you know which which took place in new zealand and uh and that was really unfortunate but at the same time, while I give my condolences to that, what happened in New Zealand and that uh, crime of these nature are something which is not to be tolerated and something which is not to be condoned in either way. But there's also another one which, and many people keep saying, they keep saying that, um, Silburn, there's so many different atrocities which is happening all over the world, you know, but somehow some seek to get seem to get more relevance at times than some you know but nevertheless I tend to never like to play Russian Relay or games you know with lives of persons persons who are actually you know who have suffered um, have had their um, because there's this one in, in Mozambique in Mozambique Massive disaster in Mozambique and Zimbabwe. Cyclone Adi, I die. Triggered, you know. Massive disaster in Southern Africa, affecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. The UN says, right. Hit by widespread flooding and devastation, affecting Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, so there's so much um, different atrocities happening around the world. You see, life goes on in many places while things are happening. Life goes on. Um, you had recently, like even in, in Jamaica, you had uh, <laughs> Bujubantan. That was a big thing there in Jamaica. Life goes on, you know. Patrick Hines, how are you doing, buddy? It's always it's always good at time to see um, your schoolmates from here, class of between 1980 and 85, and all those sort of things, um, which is really good, you know. Yeah, so so Bujibantan was down in Jamaica there, um, big time massive show um which was great but <clears throat> but for today my topic is simply going to be about brexit really you know and and that is what this topic is going to be simple about brexit i've been following brexit from the year 2000 i think 2015 if not before yeah i've been following brexit from 2015 if i'm not mistaken 
2015 before um, you know 2015 2016 yeah and and it's 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 interesting because most of the guests which I had on my show for a period of time I asked each one of them this question in or out in or out and um, it was very interesting to hear different persons views you know and the the referendum which was held on um, Thursday the 23rd 2016 voters were asked one simple question whether the UK should leave or remain in the European Union hi James how are you doing good afternoon there whether they should leave or remain and the picture which I have up um, as my profile today for the show was uh, leave or remain leave side one by nearly 52 percent to 48 percent 17.4 million people vote to leave 16.1 million people voted to stay but the exit didn't happen straight away it's due to take place on 29th of March 2019 I believe that the, the massive mistake which took place was that they should have actually leave right away trigger article 50 I believe David Cameron should have actually triggered article 50 before he flashed right and I'm not going to go back into the history you know into the history of uh, Brexit and we're being from been talking about it for a while and one of the reasons why I tend to do this show and keep a spotlight on Brexit is because I recognize based on feedback and based on persons who come and and um, and uh, message me is that uh, they appreciate when I sort of uh, break it down from my perspective uh, because some people are getting really fed up with the whole thing regarding Brexit but I think it is a, a very important um, um, a very important topic I believe it is a very important issue and I believe it is something that we need to pay very close attention to it was very interesting today when we heard that Donald Trump Jr. Um, wrote a letter, uh, wrote an article, I believe, in the Guardian or one of the papers or the Telegraph, to say that Theresa May did not listen to his father, Donald Trump Sr., as to how to go about the deal. Um, and that was that was something very interesting. But I just want to greet some persons here um, at the same time. Yulo, Patrick Hines, Diana. Um, good evening on Instagram. Political UK. James Clo, James H. Queenie Jen. I want to thank you guys for coming on and um, for those who um, I would appreciate as well if you if you share the video uh, as well you know and yeah so Donald Trump Jr. said if Theresa May had listened to his father which is Donald Trump Sr. as to how to go about the Brexit deal as we all know Donald Trump wrote this about the art of a deal many people say well he's not a deal maker he's a scheme maker or different reasons or alternative facts and all those sort of things so we've been talking about this Brexit for a while. Many people call this country the land of Brexit and they call the US the land of Trump. And there seem to be some level of similarity or some sort of, um, uh, what should I say, linkage between the two because when just before Brexit, it was around the time when Donald Trump was uh, was trying to get into the whole frame of things and getting the nomination, getting going. And uh, they call it Independence Day. Donald Trump had Nigel Farage on the platform in the States and said, this is Nigel Farage. This is the man who is actually leading the way for, uh, what should I say, Brexit. And um, it's going to happen. And, you know, so they made these similarities between Trump and Brexit. But one of the things about Brexit is that people are feeling that um, they're getting tired of the establishment telling people what to do. Establishment not being, re being really fair, not being real. It happened a bit similar where Trump seemed to have um, became um, president as a result of draining the swamp and all these sort of terminologies, which seems um, a, a facade in, in, in some way to some persons now because so much has happened since. And I'm giving my perspective as well, and it'd be good to hear your views as well. Um, and if anybody wants to come on and to talk, that would be great as well. I have, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, so, so therefore... So, so, so the whole scheme of things, we, we, we've got the, um, the, the, the Brexit that took place. It, it is, um, we're at this junction now. We're at this junction now whereby it is do or die. We're at this junction now whereby it is time now for us to leave on March 29th, 
which was supposed to be my birthday, a few days after my after my birthday, it was supposed to be my gift. Um, I guess you, from the, from hearing my sound and tone of my voice and the, the language I'm talking, you may sense that I'm a Brexiter. But I, I tend not to use the word Brexiters because I believe it has been divisive where people are saying I'm a Brexiter, I'm a Remainer. By 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 speaking like that, one actually is um, it, it's creating that level of division. You know, people vote Brexit or vote Remain for all their different reasons and the referendum was something which was um, not whip-led, whip-led in the sense that persons had to vote a particular way like parliamentarians or whatever like that. It was it was cross-party where you got persons from um, the Labour Party joined up with the Conservative Party and they voted accordingly whether they wanted to vote for leave or to remain and you can see that what is happening now whereby you've seen some MPs have left it's been it's been very toxic and and people have reached to a point now and and I, I fast forward people have reached to a point now where they are somewhat fed up you know I don't know if if you're of that um, for those in the UK um, where are you at are you um, fed up let me hear what you say let me see your comment are you fed up? Are you naughty? You just want to get going. Just shut this thing down, right? Theresa May has been at it for a long time, you know, and I, I and I can't actually blame Theresa May in a way, and at the same time I can blame Theresa in a way, you know. Uh, many persons who know of myself know that I'm I'm a, a conservative leaning person, or I vote a conservative. I'm a member of the Conservative Party, and um, with no apologies. Because I believe it's very important for persons to actually be involved in different political um, parties and get their their views across, you know. So as I said, I believe Theresa May is not to be blamed, and I believe Theresa May is to be blamed. I believe parliamentarians somewhat have let down this country, right? Because based on what I said earlier, the people voted to leave, right? The the democratic um, political structure is that a vote is a vote. In any parliamentary elections, ladies and gentlemen, if there is a uh, 5,000 persons, 5,000 eligible voters, and for 5,000, half of that is 2,500. If 2,501 voted for a particular person, or they voted for, um, uh, say they voted for Pauline Gale, if 2,501 voted for Pauline Gale, yes, and 2,499 voted for Chris Preddy, OBE, then what is going to happen is that Pauline Gale is the one to win, even just by one. Of course, Chris Preddy might be saying, hang on a second, I, 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 I believe that I need to get that one. So normally when you have one, people tend to always say, listen, if there's just one, I, I, I need to do a recount. So they always have this recount, especially if there's one. And he go back and it could be, guess what? Chris Brady could have picked up the other two. And actually Pauline Gale got lose two. And if anything, as a result of a Chris Brady win. But that's the political system. So just like how referendum, um, it's a situation like that. Each vote counts. And it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, that whenever there is there's an election, never to say this. And this is what many people say all the while. Well, my vote ain't gonna count. You know? But I tell you this every single vote count i've seen mps who have won by 26 and i've seen mps won by thousands a majority of thousands in the uk here so everything counts. so what seemed to have failed along the way is whereby the the parliamentary structure or the parliament have not seemed to gather this into their system to say that we acknowledge and we respect the vote and this is what we want we want a brexit well, the Labour Party, the majority of the Labour Party, and from the Labour Party conference, is that they want somewhat a new referendum or so like a new people's vote. Many people are of the, of the position of the view that it is because they all want to remain in the European Union. Brexiters or persons who vote are upset because they just want to leave. Right? right? And, and as a result of that, you're seeing a situation where it is a stalemate. I won't go into the history of Gina Miller. I won't go into the history of some of the things that happened because it's been going on for two years now. People are just really fed up. People are talking about having a general election. People are talking about having a people's vote. And, and when they say people's vote, people are saying, why having a people's vote when you already had the people's vote in 2016? 
in 2016 there was a people's vote so if you have another people's vote why don't you actually have respect for the people's vote before or actually are you trying to get votes yeah for the vote that you like and then and you stop that so therefore if there's another referendum and it the vote is for remain maybe brexit as well say we want a, 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 a second referendum where does it stop so this is it what happens next now so we are at this point now whereby the prime minister went and had a vote um sometime in january for withdrawal bill didn't pass went again didn't pass and was trying to go again and the the, the speaker blocked her right so let me just break down what happened next the pnp the, <laughs> the, i always say pnp all the while the prime minister is writing to the eu to ask for brexit to be postponed right because of this stalemate now for it to be postponed or to get this extension now the european union and the big wigs junker tusk and garnier garnier they're actually saying what is this for you know the 27 states will have to agree with this why do we need another um, extension what are you bringing to the table you know what is this a colleague of mine sometime when we talk about some cases sometime when the course what is this what is this what is this what is this this is going on too long they said and the Prime Minister will be traveling to the EU summit in Brussels on Thursday to discuss the delay options right People are, are a bit annoyed. Even Remainers are annoyed. You got Remainers who voted to stay were actually saying, "Let's just get this going. Let, let's just deal with this thing." Some are saying, "All the all the MPs now need to just vote for this withdrawal bill." I personally believe that it's not the best deal, but guess what? I believe it's a stepping stone to leave ultimately. It's like uh, the Caribbean countries. Many Caribbean countries have independence. Jamaica, for argument's sake, have independence in 1962, right? And as a result of that, many people say it is not real independence, but it's like a work in progress, a progress in action, work, work, WIP, work in progress. So therefore, what I believe should be happening now is that they should have voted for this deal, not perfect, but it's a work in progress. But because of the the um, the, the the lackadaisical nature, the the um, the stubbornness of Parliament. What you're having now is and where they block the Prime Minister's left, right and centre. It is now pointing towards on what may be a no deal. Many people don't want a no deal. People are all, right now, right now, ladies and gentlemen, people are stocking up in the UK. Believe it or not, people are stocking up in the UK. There's a man that says stocking up toilet papers, thin products or whatever. They call it a delay. They call it a Brexit um, box, an emergency Brexit box. Um, before Project Fair, Project Fair, and this is for persons who are overseas. I'm giving a sort of uh, this is like I call this a teaching moment. I had a show on on Saturday and I had three wonderful guests. I had this guy um, who you have been hearing about. He's uh, he was tabbed and he did a show named Amani Simpson. I had this gentleman named uh, um, from London coming to Gospel Choir. His name is Basil Maid. Another lady named Miss um, Anita Witter. Anita Witter is this company called Jewel Art. And right through those three programs, those three interviews, which are going to come out soon, one is going to come on to, on the 24th of March, which is my birthday, and also the fourth year of the Silburn Show, for those who know the show. And there are going to be some teaching moments in that show. And that's the first one will be Anita Witter, some teaching moments. And right now I'm talking about a teaching moment, right? at this moment for those who are overseas and and if you have any questions to ask do ask me about brexit at the same time all right let's go so if an extension so, so all 27 eu members have to agree any extension which is proposed right if an extension is agreed the prime minister miss may will probably go get her deal that was previously heavily defeated through parliament so she can get an extension so i'm not talking about she's trying to get into june Right to do this, MPs and peers will also get a vote on any delay. Talks have been continued with the DUP and the Tory Brexiters who voted against the deal because at the same time you have persons who are Brexiters, persons who want to leave, didn't vote for the deal because they didn't like how the deal is set up. They didn't like how the format and the structure of the deal. So these are persons who want to leave but did not like the deal, so they voted against the deal. And then also the remainers, those who want to remain, no matter what, 
they will vote for Remain or they want a second vote. The government, they said, could seek to hold a third meaningful vote on the withdrawal agreement next week. I want to go back again for those wondering what the DUP. The DUP is the Democratic Unionist Party, which is the one which is propping up the Conservative Party at this present moment. But there's this whole thing about the backstop. The backstop is this arrangement between Northern Ireland and Ireland, whereby there's a soft border. They don't want to have this hard border. So look at it this way. It is like the UK, as you know, is um, England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland. That's the country, the United Kingdom, right? Northern Ireland and Ireland is just one, but they've got this border. So if you know the UK and what the UK has been guilty of and which has been good at, in a bad sense, is splitting up countries. Iraq, Iran, right? Um, um, India, Pakistan, parts of Africa, you know? West, um, South, um, you know, Western Africa, split up all over the place. Right, so what you have in now is that they don't want this hard border, so they talk about this backstop thing. So that has been one of the key factor and one of the blockage in the way of Brexit. This backstop. There are many good terms which has come out: backstop, Brexit. Where do all these things come from? I would, I would say if if France get into the play, France would be calling it Frexit or Fragit. If Germany coming, I call it Germ Germexit, <laughs> whatever like that. So and, and at the same time, at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, what 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 they're saying is that. And and what some and I I believe this as well, the European Union, Brussels, do not want a very good and effective Brexit for the United Kingdom because if that takes place, it sets a precedence for other countries, other nations who are struggling to leave as well, yeah. So the, so therefore, it is not good for there to be a very strong deal, not very good for there to be an effective deal not very good for it to go so therefore what they want to do is to block it to make it uncomfortable and for people to say oh let's let's forget this foolishness uh let's let's just stay in the eu and it's like comfort zone comfort zone people do not like to break comfort zone people like to stay in the comfort zone they don't want to get out into the shores people no they like they want to stay within the shores you know they want to stay within the the where the sand is they don't want to go into the uttermost path and in life, one has actually got to step out. It's a risk. As a matter of fact, with the guests on my show last week, um, one of the key things that came up about was fate, stepping out, fate, you know, the, 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 the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uncharted waters will bring you new territories, new levels, new devils, but new opportunities as well. Right, so that's why I'm also excited about Brexit. I believe it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's going to be a teaching moment. It's going to be an exciting time as well, uh, and and um, and I believe that is something which is important because right now I think the, the Secretary of State in the United States of America has actually come out to say they are willing, they are ready to do some deals with the UK, um, Germany, not Germany, um, Australia, um, Japan, China, uh, um, Brazil. Asian countries ready, ready to do some deal, and I always say that the Caribbean with CARICOM need to be ready as well to make some deals with the UK. And at the same time, I must say this: they do not have. Uh, there's not a loss with the EU. What you're doing a gain because the 27 states which remain, they're still going to have good trading deals with the UK. There're going to be some tariff issues or whatever like that. Yes, but guess what? That is what happened. There're going to be some visa issues, some passport issues. But yeah, that that is what. That is what happens when you have um, things. People do that. People are doing that right now in America. If Americans, if you go to America, if you go to Australia, whatever these countries, they're all visas, they're all these restrictions. So it's a part of the process. So, so, so this third meaningful vote on the withdrawal bill agreement next week, which Prime Minister wants to get in, but, but, this is what happened. Order, 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 order. The Speaker put a spanner in the works, right? The Speaker has put a spanner in the works. The Speaker said he will not let MPs vote again if the question is exactly the same. It makes sense, you know. What what, you know it's like you can't keep going back again each time with the same thing. The UK leaves the EU on 29th of March. If, if and 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 if that is blocked, then really and truly, and that doesn't happen. In, and the Prime Minister do not get the extension by law because this was passed in, in Parliament the UK leaves the EU on 29th of March 
with or without a deal unless a delay is agreed and the delay deal or what she's trying to do is to go to um, Brussels and to do that so there's some shady waters shady moment which is happening now now the question is and, and I, I wonder what did the speaker do and and I, I made some good notes here what did the speaker do what's the speaker did let me just find something here where's my notes here what does to, to the John Burko what the speaker how does that look for him? blah 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 Brexit Theresa May right what happened is this and this is why they're saying that um, the speaker um, is somewhat a, a remainer uh, people have accused him for actually having the speak having a, a, a poster in his car but he corrected them and said this is his wife's car and many people are believing that the speaker is somewhat of a, a remainer so so what what happened is this uh, the Brexit saga taken it, it took a twist when the speaker said he would not allow another vote on Theresa May and um, what what he said is that um, to hold a vote which is actually doing the same thing over and over again doesn't make sense there's got to be some fundamental change he said we rule out another vote on the withdrawal agreement negotiated with the EU if the motion put to the MP was the same or substantially the same as the one they rejected last week then he's not going to allow it MP said no to Mr. May deal a week ago by 149 votes having first rejected it in January by 230 votes the biggest parliamentary defeat for a government so the speaker said there will have to be a demonstrator change to the deal before MPs to allow another vote so what he's talking about is that you can't come back and bring the same thing you can't just see you know it's like you keep coming back you keep coming back there's got to be some substantial change to it some argue that if the um, attorney general you know if the attorney general makes some fundamental shift to his legal advice then that could be something especially if the if the whole issue about the backstop is uh, is sorted then that could be something substantial the speaker was also taking the task because in the past he also did something which was normally he, he divert he deviated from precedent in this one is relying on precedent something which is what he cited strong and long-standing parliamentary precedents dating back to 1604 that's where he went back all the way to 1604 right referent to Erskine May Parliament ancient and respected rule book he said MP should never be asked to vote again on the same proposition if they are already negative it during the current parliamentary session and he cited the example where predecessors of his had enforced his convention the most recent being in 1920 yeah struggling to hear you somebody said it's struggling to hear me uh, uh, let me just ask somebody saying that they're struggling to hear me are you struggling to hear me Instagram are you struggling to hear me let me see if anyone can respond on Instagram are you struggling to hear me and on um, on Facebook are you struggling to hear me let me see or maybe Paul and Gailey could be could be yourself but let me hear if, if, if you're struggling to hear me put your hands up yep anybody let me see I wait a bit Dun, 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 dun. are you struggling to hear me you can hear me fine okay fine Pauline I think um, do do check your 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 um your your thing there to see if you got a problem there I've got one so far so you can hear me fine okay so do do check that out um, it's very important that you hear what I'm saying and it's important that people on the replay can actually hear right okay must be your phone okay good good right 
So it, it is believed that it is a Labour MP, Angela Eagle, who pressed the common speaker on the matter. Right? And it's, it's right. He was asked to look into the matter by a Labour MP, although he had been expected to make an intervention in the Brexit process at some stage, as it has stained Parliament normal procedures to break in point. After the PMP deal rejected for a second time, Labour's Angela Eagle, actually she was um, acting leader one time, of, or she was running to be the leader of the, the Labour Party, asked the Speaker to rule whether it would be proper for the Commons to be asked to vote on a deal that it had decisively, uh, decisively rejected twice. A promise to go away and sort it out, right? But what what many are saying, and I'm just breaking this down in a way. Some are saying it is politically explosive, politically um, like a dynamite. It is shown like a bombshell because it it is somewhat deemed to be undermining. And what you what you're seeing happening is is like the prime minister somehow have no control, and that's what many are saying. Many are saying maybe it's time for her to go, and then for somebody else to take to carry it through and to bring the country together. But I beg to differ because no one can actually bring the country together at this point unless uh, a, a new leader of um, like a, like a what should I say, uh, um, a, a government, a coalition is to be formed between Labour and the Conservative and they have a, a leader of national unity, a party of national unity. That's the only way because there's always be Labour and there's always be Conservative. Right? And Brexit is toxic. What you want is a decisive leadership and just call it a day shut it down i believe that's what the prime minister should do call it a day shut it down get the brexit and go you know that's why they said the timing of his announcement could not have been more politically explosive political the immediate consequence that it has pretty much ended any chance of there being another vote on the pm deal this week even though according to some source she's going to push for it still right there's going to be many point of orders because when he was talking at the time there are many point of orders right and the immediate consequence is that as i said it ended any chance if theresa may have been hoping prime minister to hold a third vote on wednesday which if successful would have paved the way for her to ask for a short technical extension for about three months to complete the brexit process i also agree with um the eu to say What's the purpose of this extension? Three months leading to six months, leading to a year, and then all of a sudden it will just not make sense. Listen, I work in a situation whereby, you know, if um, if something goes out a bit too long, and um, you know, in, in my in my nature, my legal work, if 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 one is not assessed or dealt with in a particular moment of time, the time somewhat laps, and then you'll have to start afresh. And then the whole momentum which one had before, it somewhat fails. And that's what we've got to be careful for, that this doesn't fail. So therefore, it's very important at this time to deal with this Brexit thing, shut it down, and just go. And then by going, then one step into new territories, because businesses, businesses are looking for certainty. And right now, there's not much certainty. They're saying that the UK right now is uninvestable. Uninvestable means to say people are not sure what's happening. People don't want to invest. People are saying if there's no deal, then you're going to have a situation with tariff. People are not going to want to into shady ground. Some companies are thinking about leaving. But at the same time, some companies are thinking of coming. And I always believe that when one go, or when one opportunity or one door closes, then other doors will open. I strongly believe that. But therefore, this level of uncertainty at this time is not good. It's not productive. But at the same time, today, it showed that the, 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 the unemployment rate reduced. It came down. Of course, some, some rebuttals say zero hours contract. I said, well, if you've got to counteract what the official figures are saying, you've got to come up with some stat statistics. So I'm not just going to accept zero hours as well. Because some people find it very beneficial with zero hours people working ability working style is also changed these days the 95 factor is not just a key factor anymore even within the 95 factor people are looking that time so they can have quality of life okay quality of life so zero hours 
do play a part, right? So what they're saying now, the the the, the date of Brexit well beyond 29th of March, chances are next week we could be leaving, and that's it. That's it. What do you say? Should I stay or should I go? Deal or no deal, right? You know, and 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 there's rumblings now saying Corbyn is fed up. Cor Corbyn wants to step down. Don't know if that is true or not, or that's just uh, uh, some uh, what what should I say? Um, alternative fact, fake news. The America want to actually get in bed with the UK and create some deals. Um, people are annoyed at the same time that uh, Barack Obama, when he came, he said the UK is going to be at the back of the line. That seemed not to be the case. As I said, the Secretary of State for the United States of America is saying we want to do some deal. Donald Trump Jr. son saying the UK should have listened to Donald Trump and just deal with this thing, shut it down within a few months. But here we are going on, dragging on and dragging on. It is so unfortunate that when they want to take the no deal off the table as well, because yes, there was a vote to take no deal off the table, but that is only advisory because that is set in stone. That is a law. And of course, it's going to overturn that if anything. And so the conservative MPs who are persuaded to back the PMD in a vote, they expect are particularly, they are grieved, right? There's an MP that James Gray said he was furious, while Greg Hans suggested Mr. Burke was one of the few public servants who was genuinely accountable to nobody. So questions are now levied at John Burke. And if you watch the television today, you can see a reporter was asking him, are you a traitor, right? Are you an enemy of the people? That is what, the, because guess what? He's somewhat now unaccountable. He's having different tiff with the leader of the house, Andrew Ledson, as well. And, um, you know, so that's what is happening. The Labour leadership has stayed out of the road so far because it is of benefit to them. But the Labour Lib Dem and SNP MPs who, f who favour a softer term of Brexit or even a referendum, referendum sense a growing opportunity if the current deadlock drugs on. And amid all excitement, ex cabinet ministers, Lord Oliver Lettwin expressed a rather different view, saying the development was not terribly important since MPs would be able to reorganize their business, known as their standing orders to allow another vote if they wanted one. So many people are saying different things, but I believe the most important thing at this time, ladies and gentlemen, is for the UK to really get together and really shut this thing down and just have an effective Brexit and to leave the EU and that is what should be happening. And I hope that is what you believe as well. But it would be good to hear your views. But um, that's where we're at now. And that's where we are actually going going to go with this whole thing regarding um, Brexit. So watch your space at the same time. Watch your space and to see it going. But before I go at the same time, um, you know, I, I just want to just, just to do a little recap here as to w what, what's happening there. Um, the if and when um, you have this so-called um, um, Brexit, many people are saying then in a few years' time they can also do it all over again, right? They can do it all over again, just like how we went into the EU some years ago. Many people are saying we can get out of it some years ago again. So therefore, there will be a new generation that will come up and say we want to leave the European Union, right? That is if the, we get out of the European Union. But it's so important, very, very important for the democratic principle to stand because many are actually saying that if we do not get the Brexit, if we do not get the will of the people, and that's always a question as to what is the will of the people. If there's a question there and the will of the people and it is not actually addressed, in the vote, in the actions, then many are saying they will never ever vote again. And we don't want that because there's been lots of apathy towards voting. And I believe this is an opportunity to stand your ground and the Prime Minister needs to lead with conviction. But the Prime Minister is actually saying that I'm not going to be running for the next election. So therefore, you could have these different options, a referendum, a people's vote, which is a people's vote, a general election, who is going to stand there, and um, or just no Brexit? What do you think? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's over to you. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm Silburn, and I approve this message, and I hope it's been helpful. 
and if it's been helpful I'd love to hear your views as well and for you to share as well and um, and please share and like this video now now that I'm finished with that now a topic which I'm gonna come on to next not today is about David Lammy David Lammy has been accused because of the whole issue regarding um, Red Nose Day that because of his mouth and because of him saying the, the white hope factor they have lost or they did not make as much money as they wanted and it's a very interesting discussion which I'm going to have I have to have this discussion very much about this um, because the other thing which has come up along the line regarding that but if that's the case I also want to blame Lamy I blame David Lamy for the fact that CVM in Jamaica weren't very effective in broadcasting the Bujibantan section section of the show. So I'm blaming Lamy for that. And if we're going to blame Lamy, we can blame Lamy for Brexit as well. Yeah. So let's deal with this white hope. I'm going to do a topic called white hope and with David Lamy because it is so crucial and it's so important as well. Okay. So thank you very much. Have a good night and thank you. And remember to like and subscribe to the show. And do go on to the YouTube and watch the various shows. And look out for Sunday for the um, the show with Anita Witter with Jewel Isle. Run Punch. There's some very good teaching moments in that. So thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Queen Jen. Yudo, Proud and Gifted, Promo World, and for Century, Twice It Twins. Thank you so much for coming on. And for those also on Facebook, um, Pauline, Raymond, Rob, Godfrey, Andy. Andy, what do you say? Yeah. Uh, is it going to be in or out? You know, Pauline Gale, what do you say? Katie Cook, for those overseas, what do you say? In or out? Deal or no deal? Brexit. Thank you very much and have a fantastic night. Thank you. Bye bye.